I am done buying Atlas releases. Okay, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I put out a tweet a few weeks ago and it was just wanting to hear your guys' thoughts in the community and everything. So I thought I'd make a video about it to create more discussion and give my thoughts on some of what you guys said because uh, I'm conflicted like a lot of people I think right now. With SMT5 Vengeance coming out, I'm super excited, but a part of me is like, mm. <laughs> So let's talk about that. So let's just start with like the base tweet. Not gonna lie with how Atlas re-releases games, it almost makes me not want to play Persona 6 or any new titles on launch. The track record just seems to tell me that a definitive version will come out three to four years later and I'll have regretted playing the OG at launch. I know for a fact that playing P5R as my first experience was only super special because I didn't experience vanilla first. I would have still had an emotional journey for sure, but the amount of impact would have been significantly less and I still stand by that heavily. I'm super excited for SMT5 Vengeance, but hot damn this trend I'm just finding super tiring though because I deeply value my first experiences of playing new games and genuinely am not sure what to do moving forward. I'm a new Atlas fan of almost four years, like ever since P5R came out. I'm new here, I know that, I'm the new kid. So I can't imagine what it's like for older fans uh, that have had to go through this rodeo for a long time. What are your guys' thoughts on this kind of thing? I just really wanted to hear what people thought of it. Like, am I the crazy one? Do you guys agree, disagree? Like, I really just wanted to hear thoughts. I think this topic is pretty interesting as a business model. Also, say hi to Elliot in the comments, please. Um, he's cute. I love him. He said hi back. <laughs> There were a lot of responses to my tweet, way more than I ever thought. So I broke up the tweets into general categories of what people were saying, and then we'll break it down from there. So let's start with people that were feeling the same way I was, where it's just like really feeling conflicted. Like when Persona 6 comes out, do I buy Persona 6? Or do I just wait three to four years for a better version of Persona 6? Obviously, I'm gonna play Persona 6 on launch. I can't not do it. Let's just go down the line here. I feel this so deeply for Persona specifically. There's such long games and I get kind of bored replaying them because the wonder of what's next disappears. So I'm also considering not getting Persona 6 on release, but I also don't want to dodge spoilers for years until the definitive edition. And this kind of remark was made by a lot of people where it's like, I wish I could play Persona 6 three to four years after launch, but there is no way that you're gonna be able to dodge spoilers for that long. Unless you're me, Apparently, I'm really good at doing that. There are ways, but it, t it takes a lot of willpower. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really hard to dodge spoilers online. And I think every year on the internet, it just gets worse and worse with that kind of thing. The way that we have to live these days is crazy. And whenever I started playing video games as a kid, the internet was not really a thing. So it's so hard to imagine that like what I grew up with versus today. Personally, I like to keep my hand on the pulse and be there right when a game comes out so I can be in the conversation and not feel like I have to dodge spoilers waiting for the re-release, though that exact enthusiasm is what sours me to the re-release somewhat. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit soured uh, by the SMT5 vengeance announcement. I would say like my brain is like 80% excited but 20% questioning my life. <laughs> I played P5 and then P5R, and though I loved P5, P5R was so much better to me. I don't really regret playing P5 first because I loved it, but I know it definitely would have been nice to play P5R blind. It will be the same with P6 if Atlas continues with this, plus games aren't cheap. And we'll get to the price topic later. It depends. I played P5 during a weird time in my life, so its shortcomings didn't register till quite later, so that made Royal a much better experience. Stuff like Vengeance is just tiring because they even admit that they were disappointed about how things panned out. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I do want to touch on that topic too. I like how while I was recording, I didn't realize he switched to the other side. So love Elliot on this side now. I'll just get this chair out of frame. Look, he's saying hi. Now we're gonna get into the tweets that were generally about just being very done and fed up with the business model. I played P5 and dropped it about halfway through, then P5R hit and it fixed every problem I had with the game systems and made it longer, 10 out of 10. Then I bought SMT5 on the Switch like a sucker and I'm waiting from now on. I wish I could say I'll wait from now on. If I was not a content creator, I think I would actually, but because I'm a content creator, I feel like I'm missing out a lot. I'm definitely skipping Persona 6 on launch. I haven't even played Royal all this time because I don't want to replay a long as hell Persona 5 again just to get to the new stuff. Student loans. 
That's a username. After over 300 hours in P5 and Royal, I thought I genuinely hated the game. I don't. I love it, but the burnout was so insane because of the very little amount of new content until the very end and sprinkled throughout the main story. I'm genuinely worried it's going to be the same for SMT5 Vengeance. Burnout is a great topic because that's how I feel happens to a lot of people with these games. There's like half the people that I read in these comments that really enjoy re-experiencing the game, which is totally valid. So you play the original and then you re-experience it in a better way and it leaves a better taste in your mouth. Whether you agree or disagree with playing an original and then playing a remake, it's very draining to play a super, super long game again in four years. I do feel like there is a burnout factor to be considered here. Honestly, Atlas should just stop with these. I think it's gonna hurt sales eventually as people will be expecting a re-release. I think DLC is also scummy as Atlas might charge a lot for those too. Yeah, DLC practices are a whole other video I could make, but we're not really going to touch upon the DLC practices per se. I do agree that over time, this business model will eventually hurt sales in terms of trust, or at least that's what I would like to believe because good product people buy. People think less and less about the morality of the things that they buy, because honestly, you can't. We live in a world where almost every business that you're buying from is shit in some way. You're very rarely going to be ethically buying anything anymore. Yeah, it's getting pretty old. I wouldn't be surprised if they did this to Soul Hackers 2 later on, if they know that they're going to make definitive versions, then just wait and release the full thing. Do you guys think that Soul Hackers 2 will be re-released? That's actually a really good question. I'm not going to lie. I think it will. Even though it didn't sell the greatest, I do still think that it's gonna get re-released. Give it three years. Next group of tweets are basically just stating that the games are too long to do this. Definitely gets tiring. There are many times where I'll just stick to the base games despite how much they do, make the quality of life updates or changes to improve the experience. I played base Persona 5 and it was good enough. It also doesn't help that these games require huge time sinks. I think that the length of the game is a huge thing to talk about personally with re-releases. Like JRPGs, especially Persona, are extremely long. And normally, if I'm replaying a game, it's at least 10 years later down the line. But yeah, three to four years, I honestly don't think that that amount of time is just not worth it. And also, I don't forget the game enough in that amount of time. All right, now let's talk about some like juicy bits. Like there's a lot of people are in the boat of like, well, SMT5 Vengeance gets a pass. Me, I'm not included. I don't think it gets a pass. Most people are saying because it's a new game. The only thing that I'm seeing online is like, it seems like 80% the same content with 20% new content and enhanced stuff. I know that whenever you open the game, you can play the original and uh, you can play Vengeance. Like that's cool, but Vengeance is still going to largely be the original, but just with a little bit more on it. To me, it feels like the devs are trying to say that it's a new game to not piss people off. I also want to say that I agree. SMT5 absolutely needed way more, and I wish that they had that in the original. That's the whole point. Like, all of this should have just been in the initial launch. So let's go through some of these tweets. Honestly, I give Atlas a pass this time just because I've been begging for SMT5 on consoles, but this trend is definitely problematic. They're creating the problem and selling us the solution with added content to soften the blow of paying a premium for an older game. This is is actually perfect. Yes, thank you. But except for the whole beginning part of giving it a pass. See, in like our perfect world, we would release SMT5 as a complete game initially, and then we would just port it a few years later. But we don't live in a perfect world, do we? <laughs> it depends on the new content. Vengeance honestly sounds like a new game bundled with vanilla, but I find cases like Royal more frustrating since it directly expands the base game which means I'm pretty much paying full price to play $80 for the same game with 20% new stuff. Yeah, that's gonna be Vengeance too. As a fan of Mega 10 for about six years now, I find it tiring too. Even I want to stop getting the OG if they're gonna come out with a new version, but I can sort of excuse SMT5 since it's unfinished content, whereas Vengeance is said to be what they initialized for five. See, yeah, I still have a hard time excusing it because yeah, you shouldn't be putting out an unfinished product that you're not happy with. But that's just like a whole other thing about how the gaming industry sucks with investors being the driving force of whether a game comes out incomplete or not. Yay! To be honest, SMT5 absolutely needs a re-release, so I'm okay with it in this case. I mean, you could say the same about almost any game. Nothing is perfect, right? I don't think it's exclusive to SMT5. I know I put out a lot of takes and opinions that are very much the minority. And here's another one probably, but my opinion is that I would much rather you take the feedback from your game 
and take that feedback into a new game rather than fixing the current game. But that's just me. All right, now we're gonna get into the category of tweets that say the originals are better than the re-releases. I've only played Persona, but in the case of those, I find that while the enhanced re-releases are very good, there's still something about the experiencing the original. Sometimes in the case of the story of Persona 4 versus Persona 4 Golden, one can make an argument that the original was better. Just to note, I have watched entire Let's Play of Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 Vanillas, and I am of the opinion that they're just not worth playing. Just play Fest, just play Golden, just play Royal. I think there's no value in the originals, personally. I actually feel like the story and overall experience are more finely tuned in the original releases. The re-releases tend to just bloat what was already good about the original and just feel tacked on overall. Yeah, I entirely disagree with this. Everything that feels tacked on either builds character, or builds story, like everything feels very meaningful to the overarching story. I hate this pattern of re-releasing games a few years later, but with new content. It gives the impression that the original will never be a final product in Atlas's eyes since they do this shit every time. I'm a vanilla P5 enjoyer over Royal. Not a fan of the new stuff. I have to admit, this tweet is the very first time I've ever heard people say that they prefer P5 Vanilla to Royal. In my almost four years now of being a Persona fan, I have never not once heard someone say that they enjoy the overall Persona 5 Vanilla experience more than Royal. The only comment I have heard is that a lot of people prefer the ending of Vanilla to Royal, which I also disagree. I understand how wholesome the ending of Vanilla feels, but at the same time, I vastly prefer the ending to Royal, actually. And that's just some of the tweets that talk about like liking the original experience better. And hey, to each their own, that's really cool. And now we're going to talk about the group of tweets that talk about wanting it to be just a DLC. I wish that they could just be DLC and the new content activates when you start a new playthrough. Thankfully, Persona 3 Reloaded won't be getting that treatment. It's a full experience. <laughs> you never know. There's no good reason they can't release the extra stuff as DLC. At this point, I just feel like they're milking the fans or something. On the other hand, they do seem to keep re-releasing games that are quality that people like, and the RPGs are still relatively niche in the grand scheme. Yeah, it kind of sucks that RPGs are actually still niche, yeah, believe it or not. But yeah, all of these tweets, I agree, it should just be DLC, and that has a lot to do with the price as well. Like, I think that it just should be like a $30 maximum. All right, now we get to the main one, tweets about price, which I just touched upon a little bit. The biggest recurring issue I have with this is that the players who bought the original releases get zero discounts for the new versions. If you previously bought P5, you should have gotten a discount on P5R. I feel the same way about SMT5 Vengeance. I loved both original releases and enjoyed my time with them, but to get a new version and be told, thanks for playing the original, now go buy the better version, full price. Or also here's more day one DLC too. Just feels greedy. I wish we got 25% discount or something. Completely agree. I've been a fan of Atlas since around the early 2000s. When I was younger, I was so excited to, be, to buy an, an updated version of some of my favorite games, like Persona 3 Fest after playing Vanilla. But now as a full grown ass adult, this trend of paying full price is infuriating. That's another thing that we can talk about, like the price of games nowadays. But I think the main thing is that right now, everyone around the world is pretty much struggling with how much inflation has gone up. And the price of just living and being a human is entirely really hard right now. In times like this, it does feel worse to be paying full price for this kind of thing. I fully agree. And not just about having to play them again, but also having to pay full price twice for the same game, which is getting harder and harder to justify here in my country, which where cause of money conversion. Games are more than twice the price that they were 10 years ago. See, this is a point that people make a lot and it's not true. I guess it depends depends on country, but at least in the West, games have been a $60 price tag for 15 years or something. It's been over 10 years though that they've been at that price tag, but I'm personally not bothered by a $70 price tag for a brand new game that's gonna give me a lot of content, but I don't think the standard of every new game should be $70. It definitely depends on your game. But like, I look at my mom who bought me a Game Boy whenever I was a kid and bought me Pokemon Yellow, Red, and Blue, and each of those games were $40. And $40 back then is a value of about $120 today. There's a lot of nuance to that conversation because it's not really talking about supply versus demand. They were more expensive back then because gaming was a newer thing. And now gaming is a lot more mainstream. So the price of games can go down. Like there is a lot of nuance to that conversation, but absolutely agree that it's hard to justify paying full price for a game that you already paid full price for. Like I'd rather be 
buying a new game, which SMT5 Vengeance is not a new game. Honestly, the best thing I find is buy the game physically when possible. Then when I'm done with it and they announce a re-release is either sell it or trade it in for in-store credit so that I can get the new game for like $30 cheaper than it normally be. Yo gamers, that's a gamer move right there. Unless you want to actually own both copies then you're screwed. Also, Atlas games always go on sale like a month after release. So just wait like a month after every release, you're gonna get it for cheaper and then sell that copy and trade it in to get the new version at a discount. All right, there's a lot of tweets that are just completely unbothered by all of this. And if you are one of those people, I am genuinely surprised that you are watching this video now to this point. But it's actually really enlightening to see the amount of people that are just not bothered by this at all. Like, honestly, kudos to you. I wish I could be you. I've only ever played the OG games first, never played a real release first. I like experiencing my favorite games in new ways. Sure, it sucks having to pay full price again so soon, but overall, I loved these games when they first came out and the re-releases made me love them even more. This is so wholesome. I don't mind this, honestly. Atlas builds really big games, so they need something to release between full episodes. Also, I look at P5R and P4 Gold and now SMT5 Vengeance as really beefed up new game plus experiences. It's fun revisiting these games with new stuff in them. Yeah, they spend spend eight years on average making a new game like metaphor is what 10 years in the making persona 5 persona 4 eight years in the making and three what do you do to fill the in-between time you just make smaller new games catherine fine soul hackers fine devil survivor fine i don't care just just you can make a smaller game it's it's okay Persona 5 Tactica, that's fine. Persona Dancing, that's more than fine. You give me way more content, I don't care. Honestly, I don't mind it. The original versions are always full games that are worth playing. They can take feedback into consideration and deliver an even better game a few years later. It's always fun to see what was added or changed, how an already great game was made fantastic. I do agree with you. As I said in my main tweet, I just really value my first experiences of games. Whenever you experience anything in life, the biggest thing that sticks in your brain is your first impression. Your first impression of going somewhere, your first impression of meeting someone. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, first impressions are a big deal. That's why I value my first impression of a game the most. Being able to experience the vanilla story and then those new additions is fantastic to me because it makes the new additions hit harder. P5R's Christmas twist wouldn't have hit me as hard if not for playing Persona 5 Vanilla and knowing, hey, this isn't supposed to happen. What? Yo, let's talk about this, actually. I don't want to compare something like Persona 5 Royal to Persona 5 to the original FF7 to the current remake, because I don't think in essence that they're comparable, especially with how much more remake is than the original Jesus and the gap to like more than 20 years. But I think we can make a comparison in terms of how a story is experienced when you already know it. And let me just talk about my experience with FF7 remake so far. At being a person that's played FF7 more than five times in my life and now experiencing remake and then I experience remake and I have these moments like I completely understand your tweet I'm like oh this is an added scene this wasn't in the original that's cool I understand this mindset because I am currently going through it however I want to hear your guys opinions and discussions on a viewer perspective would you rather watch someone have a fresh blind experience with any remake of a game, re-release of a game, or would you rather watch someone that just focuses on the differences? I could be wrong, but I feel like most people would prefer watching that person that is completely fresh and blind to a experience. And that's the perspective that I think of with re-releases. Not gonna lie, I obviously don't speak for everyone, but my first experiences with both Vanilla and Royal were both incredibly memorable and special to me in different ways. Ironically, I don't think I would have appreciated Royal as much as I did without my initial experience. That's cute, actually. See, I like hearing this kind of stuff. Shout out to Oziak, what a gamer, man. All right, so anything that didn't fall under like specific categories per se, I put at the end. So this is like the other category. We'll start off with Marsh. Aside from being part of the initial hype, I don't know if there 
there really is a point in buying the initial release. I think it's worth it for me just for talking about something when it's most relevant. Yeah, if you're just having a bunch of your friends playing the same game and then you can't talk about it because you're waiting, it's like, that sucks. All right, our bro Pinoy, let's go. I'm pretty split about how I feel about this. The first time I play a game is magical to me, and I'm also excited whenever they re-release a game with added content, so I can't really say if I definitely dislike it or not. There's pros and cons to both with me. Another example is I played P4 Gold and not P4. I have also played Strange Journey Redux and not Strange Journey. But I also have a strong desire to play the original versions just to see the differences. I'm a nerd for that kind of thing, so that probably plays into that. Honestly, I feel like me and Pinoy are the same people because like, I agree with every single sentence in here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. I'm hoping that Atlas is moving towards making additions as DLC. I think whatever they decide to do with Metaphor will be a good gauge for the future. And I am that naive piece of shit that thinks like this too. I'm like, man, let's see how Metaphor goes. Are they gonna re-release Metaphor in three to four years? Because if they do, it's never going away. That's just it, it's never going away. According to Midori, you have no need to worry for Persona 6. Everything else seems to have the re-release thing happening. Take leaked information with you will if she is probably Probably the most correct leaker I've ever witnessed in gaming. Ah, sure, we can talk about this. I mute any people that talk about leaked news, data mined news, because it is very damaging to the gaming community. I do not give it any attention. So I'm just gonna say it right now. I do have Midori muted on Twitter. I kind of find it disrespectful to game developers. I do not read it. I do not look at it ever. I think every Persona game from now on should have the re-release girl be the female protagonist. So then it forces them to have them make a different game perspective story and not feel like the same game majority of the time. I love and hate this. Like, I actually really like the idea, but at the same time, I look at Persona 3 and I hate the arguing and the... No, this one's canon and then Fancy doesn't actually... I hate it. I hate it so much. I love this, but I also hate how fired up that makes the community. Oh my God. I have a bad memory. Every replay is like new. Holy fuck, I wish I were you. <laughs> LaRue! I, sorry, I don't know how to say the name, oh my god. So I've been in the fandom since 2005 and I can say that I've never liked the re-release thing that Atlas does. Early Atlas did this around the time I started playing and it was due to financial failure, crunch, rush release in Nocturne's case. And it's really in 2009-ish where we got it being done because of success and a desire to expand a game in Persona 3 alongside experimentation like with ESP Persona enhanced ports. It's a really weird issue because many games that get enhanced ports after this suffer from not ever really being the definitive version because they make gameplay and narrative changes that can divorce the game to varying degrees from the original intention. Yeah, I completely agree with this. It gets real weird. Some games it definitely feel the best version in the case of Desu enhanced ports, but with games like Strange Journey Redux, Catherine Full Body, SMT3 HD, and a few other titles they are kind of competing with the previous release. Atlas suffers from so many anti-consumer practices that I can't fault anyone for being apprehensive in supporting the initial release uh, versions in modern day because this enhanced release model is very anti- anti-coupled with the, their predatory DLC practices. I can't really blame anyone who is upset by this. At this point, the enhanced port model is not done necessarily because of restrictions or anything that would be excusable in my opinion. Though SMT5 Vengeance is very explainable as having intense development issues, so while I hate this business model in this one instance, I understand it is understandable to some degree. Yeah, and I agree largely with all of this, actually. Wait, I love this. When Crystal says that it gets a thousands of likes, when I make fun of people's past purchases practices coming at catching up with them, and that everyone should be waiting for the eventual FF7 remake all in one pack in a game, I'm the know-it-all jerk. It's not my fault y'all don't listen. It might be the attitude that's the problem. You might want to check that. <laughs> It's probably better not to attack people. Generally, it works better for you in life. No hate or diss to this person, but I don't give a fuck. I'm playing Persona 6 in the enhanced re-release that will eventually come out immediately. I take the hate and diss very personally. So now that we've gone through like the other kind of tweets, I want to end it on more of a hopeful note because I thought these tweets were really cute. True, although I think they plan to end it since Reload will be getting DLC instead of a re-release, which yeah, we can talk about that. As of recording this, like a few days ago, they announced the answer as a DLC wave expansion, which yes, that is the business model you should have for the future. I really hope that they continue with that. I highly doubt that they would re-release this in the future when you have a wave expansion DLC tied to it. So this is super promising actually, but I don't want to get my hopes up. I honestly think that SMT5 Vengeance will be the last re-release that we get and Persona 3 Reload and P5 Tactic are going to be the first games going forward that have future DLC which add on to the games. I love that you guys are more hopeful toward this. I think that we need more of that in our lives. So thank you. Uh, I don't think day one DLC practice will stop, but I do think that 
re-releases will die down in the future. I could just be huffing a lot of copium for all I know, but... But here we are. I don't know what to expect. I'm just naive. This video ended up being longer than I wanted it to be. If you're still watching to this point, I want you to type in the comments like a secret code. And that secret code is going to be bread. Just bread. But yeah, no, I also want to know if you guys like these kind of discussion type videos. I really like discussing and hearing other people's opinions on things. And that's because I know I have a lot of unpopular opinions with a lot of things. I love hearing everybody's perspective to kind of enhance my own perspective. It's really cool having good discussions. And also thank you guys to everybody that responded to my tweet. I was very surprised that very few people were like rude with their replies. So I think it was honestly like a really cool discussion to have, especially on a platform platform like Twitter that discussions are hard to come by in a good healthy way. So like tell me what you think about videos like this if you want more. And I'll end this video with this tweet that I thought would be super fitting to put at the very end of this video. This practice sucks shit, but the way I see it, one, you go for the cool game in the short term and ignore the re-release if it's too close for you personally. Two, you can wait years for the inevitable refresh. Or three, you can play none. All valid options. And they are. At the end of the day, no one's right or wrong here. But I do think that we can all agree that the practice does suck and we all want it to end. I don't know if anybody at Atlas watches these videos. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this discussion, and I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for sticking around. Bye!